You straight up cuckooed that dude, bro. Oh my god. You've got all your Charger gear on because you're feeling fresh as hell. Well, you guys better enjoy it. The fans loved it. You have to love what you're seeing on tape if you're a Chargers fan, especially for the future with Justin Herbert. On the move and throws and touchdown. Do this together. Players, coaches, staff, fans, together, we can create something truly special. Stay tuned for some good content. Hey, 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 on a Thursday, Friday. Welcome back, everybody, to the Charger Chat. <laughs> hey, I'm, hey, hey. I'm your co host, Will Dog, <laughs> sitting with my buddy, Kev Huggin Duggan. What's up, guys? And Kyle, the coach, Duggan. Yep. Yeah, boy. <laughs> yep. All right, gang. Well, we've got plenty to talk about this episode. Lots going on about our. Our boys on the injury reports will get to all the quotes and all the talks about those guys. Uh, we'll take a look at the Jacksonville Jaguars. And as always, we've got a Craig experience and a bolt beat lined up. But first and foremost, let's talk about it. Justin Herbert news. We're all anxiously watching Twitter, anxiously watching the news going like just somebody give us something to talk about. And God bless Austin Eckler gave us something <laughs> I to know, talk about. Came out of oh, nowhere. Eck, dude, Eck feels a little off the leash when he's on his little Twitch stuff. Like, I don't know if you're allowed to be saying all this stuff, Eck. I love yeah, it. Give it to it me tight. all day. Subscribe. I mean, I'll Give him money. Fan, take it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty crazy. Eck has got his own uh, avenue of uh, gaming and, and Twitch streaming and everything like that. And so uh, somebody took a clip uh, from Austin Eckler talking about on his live stream. He said, I walked in, I saw Justin and Corey in the training room. He had a big old smile on his face. I said, Hey uh-huh. boys, what's going on? You guys getting better? Justin said, you know, uh, we are getting treatment. Let's uh, see what we can do with a big smile. I will take that. Uh, you saw him. This man was putting on a show, even with some cracked ribs, you know, cartilage specifically. Uh, we are going to see how he's feeling. He's played with cracked rib cartilage before. What? I don't know. If, and then he said, I don't know if that's out. <laughs> I am expecting nope. him to be <laughs> good. He'll still probably throw for some crazy amount of yards and throw some TDs. So wow. apparently, Justin Herbert. Apparently, we have Philip Rivers reincarnated. Is yeah, what we have. Herbert's a, been down this road before. Apparently, I think it was like 2020 when we played the Panthers. Somebody like went back and did like some some sleuthing. I, oh. I think it was uh, it was at Thanos. It was like Dean Thanos. Okay, uh, something. Some, somebody. I want to give him the proper. <laughs> Dean Thanos. That's solid. <laughs> He's got a solid name. I think it was that Inevitable. something like that. But he went back and I got love it. you know got the tweets <laughs> talking about him. You know, being questionable and that kind of stuff. And that oh, was wow. it his ribs so he's done this before so all that all the stuff we talked about last episode we're like oh who knows maybe chase daniels week is not chase daniels week just nervous gonna play i feel even more calm i felt confident yeah. before even more confident now mm-hmm. well like you said kev the jaguars defensive coordinator even came out and was like what are you talking like he's playing i don't buy day to day, day, day i don't buy that shit he's no, playing yeah, yeah not we're- buying it <laughs> sorry not buying it not today nope um so yeah, so Eckler dropping the hot takes and apparently the hot <laughs> injuries that we didn't even know existed. <sighs> I'm just I'm thrilled. If you're not subscribed, I'm subscribed. I just didn't see it live. If you're not subscribed, go follow him on Twitter because you'll get yes. you'll get stuff about our team that no one else has, and we don't have to like listen to the ESPN reporters like making shit up and like I don't know. You hear it from the man himself, <laughs> right? Whether he whether he knows it's out or not, Austin Eckler will drop the hot. Or he's takes. allowed to be talking about <laughs> whether it. Whether he's not. allowed to or not. <laughs> we get it there first. Um, well, apparently Austin Eckler is not the only one talking about Justin Herbert. Uh, Gilbert Manzano tweeted out Matthew Stafford uh had this to say on the toughness of Justin Herbert displayed last week. Matthew Stafford, quarterback for the Rams, said, I was watching that game with my wife, and she was like, Somebody get him out of there. And I was like, he ain't coming out. <laughs> felt for him in the moment, but was really a fan from afar. Yeah, dude, I'm telling you, that was a galvanizing moment. Not yeah. only not only for the team, but like I feel like that's how you win fans and earn respect in the NFL is people guys do this every week. They're playing through hurt all the time. It's mm-hmm. when you see it like it was visible on Thursday night prime time, everyone saw. Um, yeah, it's, it's I think it's gonna be that moment you look back at at the end of the season. Like that was when that was when we became a team. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. He's just, I, I still, I went back and watched it again. That throw he made after he could barely run. How the fuck 
do you do that? I don't know. Like, that's insane. You got to be Justin Herbert to make that throw. Yeah. Also, we <laughs> our obsession with Justin Herbert has now spread outside of Charger fandom. <laughs> Somehow other <laughs> fan bases know that the Charger chat specifically do you want to hear what a happened? real, real love affair with <laughs> Justin Herbert. Do you want to hear what happened? It's one of my proudest <laughs> moments that people know that. Okay, so I was random because I run the Chargers Instagram and the Twitter. I get Charger the notification. Chat, not the, the Chargers. Chargers. Ch not the Chargers. Yeah. Chargers <laughs> chat, sorry. My, my apologies. So one day. Yeah, yeah. One day. Um, one day. But we got we got tagged and a Raider fan was talking about, you know, they were talking about who's your least favorite. It was some Raider video. Who's your least, least favorite, you know, team that you hate the AFC most? AFC West fan base. And I'll just, I'll read you what he said. This is awesome. I'm like, honestly, I was so pumped when I heard this. He said, I fucking hate Charger fans, especially the ones that talk on the Charger Chat podcast. Hey. They always have the Raiders. We did it. They always have the Raiders dick in their mouths. I've never seen three guys so gay about Justin <laughs> Herbert. Lol. Uh, and then we had a little back and forth. Do you want to hear the rest of it? Please. The yeah, good can yeah. there. Okay. <laughs> and then I all I responded was, thanks for listening. Right. Because yeah. you listen to our podcast and Dude, you know how much we love Justin the deal. Herbert. If he, he listens a lot too. If he knows yeah. that we <laughs> have knows that such much, feelings yeah. about it's not like he pops on for a segment and pops mm -mm. out. Yeah. So he's probably listening right now. My guy. Thanks, oh yeah. Dude. And and he, our our friend uh Diaz Raider, uh said, um, you're welcome, Dick Ryder. Go suck <laughs> Herbert Dick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like this guy. God, charge wow. Raider fans. This are guy's just, into dicks, really. He's dick centric. He's he's, he's he's very dick centric. <laughs> um, and then my, my response, it felt it felt fitting at the time. Um, can you give us some tips? How um, you are the only one in the AFC West that really knows how to suck. Boom. Damn. There it was. So yeah, that kind of <laughs> we've had a lot of Raider fans come at us after that. Like I posted that on our Twitter, but hey, well worth it. Yeah. Honestly. Oh my God. I mean, yeah. listen, Dude, they're folks, if you're they're gonna just... keep yeah, you guys are squawking from the bottom of the barrel. I mean, get over it. Like <laughs> that's it's uh And that wasn't even an fault. insult. I love Justin Herbert. I know yeah. they didn't even the things come I do like... for that man are probably you're, Let's not talk about it. You're here. mad right. at us for liking our quarterback. That's yeah. what, that's sorry you have Derek Carr. Yeah, you really have mediocrity. <laughs> right. And that's yeah. all you have to be excited about your for years to come and too. your running game or whatever <laughs> it is you're excited about. But yeah. I, it's hard that you can't be excited about him. Right. But we are. We love our quarterback. All right. Well, looking over at uh, more stuff that's going on around Twitter, apparently there's a possible record that Justin Herbert can break this week. Justin Herbert is two completions away from 900 for his career, which would set the record for the fastest quarterback to reach that mark in NFL history at 35 games per Chargers game release. Wow, 900. And 900 completions games. in 35 games, yes. Wow. Let's go. It's done. Yeah. Done deal. Done, done deal. deal. Even yeah. with some busted ribs, he's going to set some records. Right. He'll Put throw it on my two. tab. Yep. <laughs> um... All right, and then Coach Staley had time to go back and look at the pick six and had this to say. This comes from Lindsay Theory. Uh, quick look back. Brandon Staley says he takes full responsibility for the 99-yard pick six that gave the Chiefs the lead last Thursday. Gerald Everett wanted to sub out, but they had him remain on the field. Everett was then the target on the pass that was intercepted. So Brandon Staley said, that's on me. Full forgiveness. I forgive you, Coach. Yeah. Thank you for owning up to it. Now we learn from it and don't do it again, right? Yeah. That's, it's when you don't the address the fact that you made a mistake, you can't learn from it if it wasn't your fault, right? Yeah. This is, all is the first I step. wanted to hear. Yeah. Yes. That's so good. Wait, good on you, coach. Good on you, coach. Yeah. It's coach continuing to say just all the right things, at least as far as Kyle's concerned. Yeah. I mean, um, it was a terrible decision. Yes. And so we can either be pissed off and just hold it over him. Right. Or be like, hey, look, he admits it was a bad call and now he's not going to do it anymore. That's yeah. right. I'm I'm good. I'm moving on. I'm happy Forgiven. about it. It's fine. Forgiven. Forgive and forget. Uh, looking over at the injury report, uh, Fernando Ramirez tweeted out Chargers wide receiver Keenan Allen and tight end Donald Parham, right tackle Trey Pipkins, and center Corey Lindsley are all day-to-day, -day, according to Brandon Staley. This is good because Parham hasn't been at practice since before this week, and he's finally practicing. So mm -hmm. this is, you know, could you imagine the two tight end sets with Everett and Parham out there? Yeah. That also helps with, you know, protecting Justin and those ribs. Maybe a few more two tight end sets could help this, uh, you know, 
Yeah, do you think we see a big change in Justin Herbert's play with the ribs? I think there's going to be, they'll be a little more conservative. They're going to have more, you know, they'll but have diff, more protection that, for Isn't that them. kind of what we've been doing? Like, we haven't been taking deep shots down the field that take a long time. I think I don't think it changes a whole lot of the game plan of what we've seen so far. Yeah, maybe, maybe not. But I still think Justin's going to fully, you know, just totally hug yeah. it down the field. I don't think it'll, that'll stop him one bit. Hopefully am, it, we establish a running game a little bit. You know, right. Like we haven't done that at all this season. Maybe this kind of gives you that, hey, get going. We need to have a run game so we can alleviate a little pressure. Yeah. Well, and the, the problem with the Jaguars is they're one of the top five teams with, you know, the run, you know, Teams can't really run on them. At least the first the two weeks, it's yeah. you know the first two weeks. There's not a lot to be said. They you know they they lost to the Commanders 28-22, and they beat the shit out of the Colts twenty four nothing. So yeah, that's job. it's kind of hard to say if that's a real stat, but if they can get it rolling, that would be awesome. And we need that. We need that this week. Yeah, I'm curious with Justin Herbert. I mean, they've said that he's going to be wearing one of those protective vest type things to protect the ribs a little bit more. Do you think that affects? His throwing ability, I mean, I don't know what that feels like if he's got to walk out like this, <laughs> you know, and he's got to throw it, you know, like that. Do you, th I, have you, either one of you, worn one of those kind of things and tried to play? Nope. No, I've never had a, one of those flat jacket type things on, but I, I, I don't know. A lot of guys wear them and it doesn't, you probably got to get used to it for sure. Yeah. Um, it's going to feel a little different. And the only thing I can think of is maybe affecting like handoffs because your elbows are in there a little tighter. Mm. Um, throwing the ball, your arms up so high, I can't imagine it's going to affect it huge. Um, gotcha. And if it was something that gigantically affected it, they probably wouldn't have, have him wear it. So um, protect the guy. I'm not too worried about it affecting. I don't think he's going to use that as an excuse if he has any poor throws on Sunday. There you go. And then Daniel Popper tweeted out, J.C. Jackson, ankle not practicing today, just walked out in street clothes with a sleeve on his lower right leg. Brandon Staley said earlier today that Jackson is sore from Thursday night, his first game back after minor ankle surgery. Makes sense. He hadn't really practiced either. His body hadn't right. been going through that. Went from zero to 60 ramp. pretty quickly. Yeah. 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 Um, He's going to get the week. I'm not worried about him playing. Yeah. Not worried about that either. So... Yeah, on to the Jaguars, one and one record, lost to the Commanders, beat the snot out of the Colts. And right now, looking at their team leaders, Trevor Lawrence, obviously 5'10 on his quarterback yardage so far. Uh, James Robinson, uh, they're leading rushing yards, 130. That's kind of surprising. I thought ETN would have been their main guy. Um, receiving yards, Christian Kirk, the guy who got the freaking big bag of money this last offseason yeah, as 195 yeah. yards. Devin Lloyd is their lead tackler with 17 and saw this name and I recognize him. Rayshon Jenkins, former Charger, yep. has one interception on the year. So, uh, you know, we can't take them sleep, you know, laying down. You know, these are obviously, these are all NFL caliber players. Got to be ready for these guys to, to put up a fight. So, hopefully everybody's feeling good and we can go out there and Give him a give him a beating of some this sort. This is I, we talked about it too. Like this is these are the games where I want to see us be the new Chargers. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I want to be the better team the whole game and not let them in. You know, I, we let's not we can't take it anyone lightly. And in doing so, let's put our you know our boot on their throats and not let them have a chance. Yeah, yeah. I just want to see that happen this week because we've played decent competition the first two weeks. Like I, the Raiders, you know, they're not awesome but they're often you know they're offense they can score on they you. have big firepower i mean you got yeah. Devonte adams on a team that's right. something that's to no be joke. scared of there's yeah. there's no Devonte adams on the jaguars and this is the first week where we're running Christian into Kirk. an offense that's not <laughs> not at the level of those two right so i think if you know let's let's be the new chargers let's see this thing that everyone's been preaching you know let's dominate let's kick some ass and right. let, let's not get worried in the fourth quarter where we took our take our foot off the grass, the gas, and you know let them back in. So that's what I want to see this week. Yeah, yeah. It's t this week's about efficiency. No, no penalties. Some of those last week we didn't earn, but we were given. Um, and then c converting on big plays. Yeah, that's just that's just. I don't know. We were such a good team that we still almost won without converting on big plays and having some penalties. Just clean that up, and it. I don't know. Like the Jaguars, yeah, they had a good outing last week. Pitching a shutout is not easy to do in the NFL. Um, but once they got up, then that pass rush with their, their two guys, Josh Allen, and then their first round draft pick, um, oh shoot, what was his name? 
it was the shock of the of the draft because he went one. He was expecting to go like four or five. Aiden Hutchinson. No, no that, he, he was who they Detroit. thought was going to go to him. Trayvon yeah. Walker. Sorry, yeah, that's right. Trayvon Walker. He if those guys can pin their ear back and come, they can come a little bit. So um, I think Jacksonville is a team that is built. If they get a little lead, they can lean into it with their with their ability to run the ball. Trevor Lawrence hopefully protecting the ball a little bit. Um, so I, yeah, if we just come out and play the way we're supposed to play, obviously get get going. I mean, our offense hasn't had an issue starting the game off. We've come out pretty hot come out of the game. Fast. Both games. Yeah. Um, if we can do that, I think we're in a pretty good spot to be able to comfortably um, assert our dominance in this game, hopefully. 100%. All right. Well, if you want to assert your dominance with uh, mm. your friends and family and wear some sweet Charger Chat swag, That's then you lot. should head on over to ChargerChat.com. <laughs> Check out all the cool stuff we've got. T-shirts, hoodies, and stickers. You can chat it up with other Charger Chatteteers in our member section and ask questions and ask both fam. So go check it out, ChargerChat.com. All right, gang. Well, now it's time to go on to the next segment. You know him. You love him. Hopefully he's all healed up, ready to go. No questionable anything he's no ready to play it's the craig experience oh yeah oh yeah come on in man kick your feet up the oh craig experience. hello there make yourself at home got some stuff to talk about right moving on yeah yeah back with another one and back home or er, chief's game was fun for the most part got to hang out with my guys at the chat uh, Kyle and Kev sucks that Dub D was under the weather and we didn't get to meet in person and I didn't get a chance to see that glorious beard face to face, but glad my guy's feeling better. And uh, other than that, yeah, welcome to another, well, week three edition now of the Craig Experience. Let's go. Tell you what, instead of going into some elaborate deep dive breakdown of uh, the game, because you've heard that done 30 different ways since last Thursday, uh, what I'll do instead is give you a little bit of insight on my views going into this Jaguars game. But before that, let's talk a little bit about my experience in KC, which was great for the most part. Uh, got to hang out with my guys, Kyle and Kev, and we had a really awesome time. I mean, got kicked off meeting a bunch of folks uh, that were representing the squad out in essentially what served as um, Thunder Alley Midwest and got to talk some, to some really cool people, took a bunch of photos, just awesome, awesome convos, man. People who really enjoy the podcast, who appreciate it for what it is and everything it does for them and to su salute really to everyone who was out there, man. And um, I really enjoyed every chat that I had with every single person. It was cool taking all the pictures and meeting all you guys. So thank you for the support. Uh, everyone here at Chargers Chat genuinely appreciates it. And I know that I speak for them and myself when I say again, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for tuning in every week. It is a huge deal for all of us. Um, as far as the game is concerned, again, like I said, not going to get super far into that. Uh... The Chargers, even from where we sat, essentially felt like they dominated practically the entirety of the game. Caught some bad breaks, some poor calls went against us. You all know what all that's about. Uh, feels like a really good game from Asante Samuel Jr. is kind of conflicted by a couple plays that didn't go his way. So depending on who you talk to, some people are upset with them. Others really look at what his overall performance was and appreciate it. Kids making strides. Uh, just really happy that Jay Herbo's injury is not severe. I mean, it's rib cartilage, so that's going to be a pain tolerance situation. And from what we've heard so far this week, seems like he's going to give it a go. Uh, and this Jaguar scene, man, they're not to be taken lightly. Uh, they actually have a real coach now, so that helps. But back to the KC experience. Uh, the guys actually talked about this a little bit on Tuesday. As we were leaving the stadium, I had a little bit of a situation that happens where a guy driving by got really tough, decided he was going to spark his uh, taser as he was riding by, which was about a few feet away from me as I was walking along the side of the road, which, of course, threw me off. And so I had a little bit of a turn of the ankle, but your boy's fine. 
uh, sore for a little bit, but I'm back up and running the way I was before. So it's not that big of a deal. But buddy, just in case you're watching this, really, really, really brave of you to do that driving by at about 10, 15 miles per hour. And uh, probably never see you again, but in case I do, I owe you one. Anyway, on to Jacksonville. And yeah, like I mentioned before, this is not a game that the Chargers should be overlooking. There's no reason to. Did you see what they did to the Colts? Although I have my questions about the Colts, uh, Matt Ryan seems like uh, another stopgap quarterback who's aged that uh, was better suited for a particular system. And the Colts don't really look like they have the wide receiving core to get it done. The running game, yes, but you can only depend on that. But so much. And uh, they made short work of uh, Indianapolis. So I expect them to come in next week now that they have an actual uh, coaching staff and some players that look like they've started to build some level of continuity and to give us their best game. Uh, be really, really awesome if the run game got it together this week. Uh, it's questionable again against the Chiefs. I I'm not sure what's going on with Eck, man. Doesn't feel like he's being utilized all that well. Uh, again, I know at this point we're supposed to be on to offense 102. And I'm seeing a lot of what I saw last season offensively in the passing game, but less Eckler, which doesn't jive all that well with me i'm not sure what's going on there but bravo to mike williams for always showing up against the chiefs hopefully that can translate over to this week and maybe keenan back in the fold so you get your primary weapon back and you can spread the ball out a little bit more um i would love to see austin eckler spread out wide in the slot used in that way coming out of the backfield as well but really that stable of running backs you have probably comes in handy this week and if you're able to impose your will in a running game, you take a little bit of pressure off of 10, keep him clean. Don't know what the deal is yet with Pipkins this week. I think he was limited in practice yesterday or for the past couple of days. Um, and Corey Lindsley, I'm not going to go there with the Packers offensive line thing. Uh, what I will say is that we can't take him for granted because, of, you know, we don't know how many healthy years he has left as a charger. And every snap that he takes is a day closer to the end of it. Uh, I know that sounds more morbid to an extent, but again, just saying we are very fortunate to have a guy uh, communicating with Herbert like that offensive down and down out. Will Clapp, uh, ironically enough, went to my high school alma mater. So I'm familiar with him, also attended LSU. Uh, he's a good backup center. It's just not the guy that I think we want to be in there for the long haul. So hopefully uh, the ailment of Corey Lindsley is something that will subside here over time. Um, probably ends up being one of those injection situations. Um, another pain tolerance thing. I think uh, he has some sort of tendonitis, which isn't fun because I've had tendonitis and uh, in my biceps. And it's just one of those things that you have to manage uh case by case scenario it can take an extremely long time for it to uh subside so uh hopefully they get it situated and uh lindsley's able to go because we absolutely need him regardless as to whether it's the pass or run game so uh as far as keys to the game for me personally again just going to reiterate this be really nice to get the run game going uh Donald Parham may be playing. So if you can roll out some two tight end sets, utilize both he and Everett in the passing game, get McKitty going as a blocker. And yo, Xander Horvath is, uh, Xander might be a player, man. Uh, he's already shown up in two straight games, back-to-back -back touchdowns in his first two NFL games. So if he becomes a, a key cog in the offense, great. Just another weapon to utilize. Defensively, here's something that's got to stop. I'm seeing people consistently talking about how the Chargers run defense doesn't seem like it's gotten any better. And I don't understand. I think people are just looking at stat sheets and box scores and they're not really doing any real looks into the games and how they went. Uh, let's put this into context, shall we? I want to say that week one, Josh Jacobs was the leading rusher for the Raiders. He had like 58 yards on like 10 carries, but like 
18 of those yards came on one run. And same thing with Clyde edwards alaire Has like 70-something yards rushing on 11, 12 carries, maybe even 10. Uh, the number escapes me off the top of my head. But 50 of those yards, 50-something of them, came on one run. So the Chargers are doing a really good job containing the run, just having one or two leaks here, and it's kind of sort of happening in the second half of games. Uh, how many snaps Jerry Tillery has been on the field for those? Uh, I'll let you go back and look at that. I'm not going to say anything negative about the guy because, um, again, at the end of the day, these are the players that we have. These are who we're riding with, so we want them to be successful. Uh, outside of that, uh, J.C. Jackson was a little sore coming back his first game from uh, the surgery so it wasn't the cleanest game from him got beat for a touchdown literally inches away from uh getting the pass break up on that play but uh let's hope he's ready to go this week as well because we, i mean i don't think we necessarily need all hands on deck to take care of the jaguars but that's not me taking them lightly as i said before It'd just be great to have the full secondary intact and uh i think derwin comes away with a few big plays and Joey and uh, Khalil go back to their week one ways. I mean, they were getting great pressure against Mahomes and the interior pressure was okay. But um, I think you see a little bit more action on the edges coming up this week. So uh, guys, that's it for me. Until the next time around, y'all know who it is. Um, looking forward to talking to you after hopefully this next Chargers dub and then we get back on track. But until then, it's Mr. Bolt Gang or Do Not Bang, a.k.a. T-O-P underscore F-L-Y-T-3 on Twitter. And um, I'll have a game recap coming up on uh, my YouTube page. Uh, you Again, charge it to the game. Y'all know what it is over on the flight deck. So till next time, y'all take it easy. Be cool and stay bolted up. Okay. Love you. Bye. Well, fantastic, Craig. Glad you're doing all right. Uh, it was when the boys told me that story, I was very concerned that uh, that shit went bad. But I'm glad you're doing loved, okay. <laughs> wouldn't have happened if Adam, girl. Adam, if you were there, it would never have happened. No, beard's too threatening. The beard would have yeah, blocked beard's it. Yeah, too, way too threatening. Yeah, yeah. way too threatening. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he's, I, it, I like how he deal with that. I'll, I'll never probably see you again. But if I do, I owe you one. I owe you one, baby. <laughs> well, um, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, great look at uh, the Kansas City game, and great look at the guys. Uh, this upcoming game, obviously, uh, not Craig to be is, overlooked, ever. not to be overlooked no ever. No. So Craig, I really hope they get Eckler. I hope Eckler gets more into the mix. I need the game, game a little man. more. He yeah. He needs game. to ha have one to pop off for sure. Yeah. So Craig, as always, thank you, buddy, for coming on and chatting with us. And, uh, and now folks, time to go on to the next segment. It is the bolt beat. Beat that drum. <laughs> Welcome back to another edition of the bolt beat. I'm the acting editor over at boltbeat.com. Jason Reed, part of the Charger Chat family now. Go check us out on Twitter, BB underscore Chargers, or go read some of our articles at boltbeat.com, or check out my personal Twitter, at Eat Your Reedies. I've been, uh, had, a, had a viral tweet go off this week, uh, this past weekend, about the uh, Buccaneers Saints interception that should have been overturned because Asante Samuel's interception was overturned. It was the exact same pick. They confirmed to be a re replay. Of course they did because benefited Tom Brady and in the Chargers case benefited Patrick Mahomes but that's in the past we're not talking about Thursday and all the the atrocities of that game from the officiating crew we're talking about week three we're talking about Justin Herbert we're talking about his injury and we're talking about what the team can kind of do this week to win this game and kind of move forward so you know as everyone knows by now as the Chargers chat guys likely touched on you know Justin Herbert fractured rib cartilage kind of dodged a bullet but not really with the injury diagnosis i mean it's not a fractured rib which is very good because it's it keeps the lungs out of play there's no chance of puncturing a lung of anything of that nature however you know from what i've i'm no medical expert from what i've you know researched you know football doc on twitter and um, just other methods you know the rib cartilage injury doesn't heal as quickly because you don't get as much blood flow and it's also kind of just one of those injuries it sounds like it's just painful as heck man like you know, it's, it's tough to breathe. You know, I've seen like, if you sneeze, you cough, it's brutal. And obviously if you take a hit to the chest, you know, to the rib area, it's going to hurt a lot as well. So Justin Herbert in theory should be able to play. He in theory can play. Now the question is what version of Justin Herbert are we getting now? There's early, you know, reports coming out of camp that, you know, Just Brandon Staley called him day to day, but there's early reports that he looks himself. He's in high spirits. There's a video of him stretching. It didn't look like he was in a lot of pain. So that's good. 
However, you can never really know with these things, you know, and he's probably going to get a pain injection. And obviously that opens up the can of worms with Tyra Taylor and how Justin Herbert got his start to begin with and how it's come full circle in that regard. I, I don't think it's something to be necessarily worried about, you know, that happening again. It was kind of a once in a million thing. And I don't think it's something we have to worry about Herbert not playing or Herbert playing horribly because, you know, you look at Tony Romo 2014, he had the best year of his career with the exact same injury as Justin Herbert. So I don't think anything in that nature is going to happen. I don't think he's going to play poorly, but the Chargers are obviously going to manage his workload, especially this first week against the Jaguars. I don't think we're going to see a lot of these big sweeping play action passes. I don't think we're going to see a lot of these big five, seven step drops, seven step drops with the way the offensive line played, probably not happening. Um, I don't think we're going to see a lot of that. I think we're going to see a different offense. That's going to make a lot of fans upset because we're going to see a lot of running. We're going to lot of see, see a lot of, you know, quick three step slants, you know, especially if Keenan Allen can play. That's huge. But I don't think the chargers are going to do anything to put Justin Herbert in danger, especially in this game. Now the Jaguars are, are a tough team because you know, in theory, if we were going off last year, the Chargers should just wipe the floor with them. But this isn't last year. They have a new head coach. They have some more weapons. Trevor Lawrence has a year under his belt. And, and through the first two weeks, they look decent. Everyone's hyping up the Jaguars saying they look really good. They look, you know, like a new team. I don't know if I'd go that far. I mean, they lost to the Commanders who just lost to the, the Lions. And then they beat a pretty bad Colts team, which I think is going to is a lot worse than, you know, a lot of us thought they were going to be. Plus, you know, Matt Ryan had some really bad picks in that game. They had multiple red zone opportunities that credits the Jaguars D. They came up and they made the stop. But if you play that game 10 times, are the Jaguars winning seven of them? I don't know. So I think the Jaguars are worth respecting. I think they're better than last year, especially if we're considering we might have a 70% Justin Herbert just based on how the game plan is, you know, attacked by Brandon Staley and company. So it's interesting because Jacksonville, they do have a very good, you know, front seven. They can get pressure on the quarterback. You got Josh Allen over there. You have first round pick Trayvon Walker. You know, you have some athletes in in the in the other levels of the defense. Rayshon Jenkins is playing out of his mind, you know, the first two games, at least in the passing game. Uh, Devin Lloyd from Utah has been fantastic so far in his first two weeks of his career. So they have playmakers and they have guys who can rally to the football. So it, it's interesting, you know, if we don't have a full Chargers offense versus a young, athletic, hungry Jacksonville defense, like we could see a, a college football style game. And then you look at the other side of the ball. Yes, Trevor Lawrence has played better, but he still hasn't really taken a game by the horns this season and really played like a first overall pick. So it's going to be interesting. Obviously, the Chargers have a very good defense. You know, they allowed 19 points to the, the explosive Raiders offense. They allowed 20 offensive points to the Chiefs, who just scored six touchdowns against the Cardinals. And not to mention the Chiefs shouldn't have scored 20 points on offense. But again, we're not going to talk about that. That's 10 days ago. Um, you know, so it's it's going to be interesting to see how Jacksonville can kind of do offensively against this Chargers defense. And I don't think they're going to do very well, if I'm being honest. So the odds aren't out yet. The, the prop odds aren't out yet for this segment, which is a little unfortunate because week one, I went one and two. Bad showing by me. Week two, I went three and oh on my picks on Boltby, but we didn't do a, a segment on the pod because of the scheduling. And I was a little upset, not at not the Chargers yet, guys, but upset at the Thursday night game. I went three and oh. If you parlayed my three picks, it was a 12 to one parlay. And the audience didn't even get to hear it. So I'm a little upset. And then this week, obviously, there's no props out right now because we don't know what's going on with Justin Herbert, even though we know he's probably going to play. So, But they're reserving that. Those The bets I would slide on, and it's kind of... You can get an idea on what props to play if you still want to play a prop based on this logic, is I think it's going to be a low-scoring, close game. Yes, we all want the Chargers to win every game by 21 points. But I think with the nature of how they're going to handle Herbert and how they're going to they're going to utilize the run game and they're going to try to milk clock and kind of put together these long eight minute drives, whether they end in three and seven points and trust the defense. I think that's the kind of game we're going to get. And the over under for this game, at least right now, is 47 and a half. So if your book still has that up, my personal book does not. If it has it up, I would hammer the under. Um, 47 and a half, you win the bet if it's 27, 20. And I think it's even more low scoring than that. And right now with Jacksonville, you know, not knowing what's going on with Herbert, they're seven point underdogs. And honestly, I would probably take Jacksonville plus seven as well. Still think the chargers are going to win, but I think the Jags are going to cover and you might even want to wait a little bit because if they announce Herbert's going to play naturally, the odds are going to go up. You at the very least are going to get a half point on that touchdown and then seven and a half, which is a big difference because then in theory, you win a bet, you know, if the Jaguars only lose by seven opposed to it would be a push. So I would kind of fade the chargers this week, just from a spread standpoint, if you're betting money line, bet the chargers, they shouldn't lose this game. And I would never, I would not put money on the Jaguars. I don't think the Jaguars will, of course, anything can happen on any given Sunday, but you know, I, I think it's going to be a low scoring. I think 
week one against Washington last year. That's the game that really kind of is, is in my mind of how this game is going to go on. Now you look at that game, the Chargers are on a road. They're at a stadium that isn't the best kept and they don't want their guys to get injured. It was the first game of this new offense for Justin Herbert, for Keenan Allen, for Austin Eckler, for these, this rookie left tackle who we knew had promise at the time, but we didn't know he was going to be able to shut down chase young week one. Um, you know, so you had this offense and they, they didn't really, they kind of ran their base stuff. They didn't open the playbook. They didn't unleash it. They kind of kept it simple. Now the Chargers should have scored more in that game. There was, if you remember the crazy call that was called a fumble when it should have been incomplete again, ref screwing the Chargers what's new, but that game finished 20 to 16 and it finished with the Chargers getting the ball with six minutes or so left and just milking the clock. I think we're going to see a very similar game. We're going to see a very similar offense, not out of newness to the offense, but out of caution for Justin Herbert. And on the other side, we're going to see, you know, the, the defense wasn't as good last year for the Chargers. The, the, current Jaguars offense is better than last year's Washington offense in week one, especially considering Fitzpatrick got hurt that game. But I think we see a similar offensive game where the Jaguars score 13 to 16 or 17 points. So I think we're looking at something like 23, 17, 21, 16, something in that, you know, it's not going to be super explosive. It's not going to be, we're going to be asking ourselves, why don't they blow them out? And it's going to be by intent. It's going to be by caution for the chargers. And I think that's kind of where I'm leaning right now. Again, if you don't want to pick against the Chargers against the spread, I don't blame you. Just stay away from it. I wouldn't take Chargers minus seven. They could make me look dumb and win by 30, but I just think it's too big of a risk at this point. So that's what I would look at. Some props, you know, I would target some unders for Justin Herbert, some overs for the rushing game. Um, I would target some touchdown unders for the Jaguars. If Lawrence is at one and a half passing touchdowns, I'd probably take the under on that. So that's just kind of the way I'm leaning, you know, play it as you will, you know, when the odds eventually do come out. Um, that's all I got for everyone this week. I hope everyone enjoyed the segment. Sorry, I wasn't here last week to give you three winners and I can't give you three winners again, but I'll give you two winners with the spread and the over under the under, especially that's going to be straight cash money. Trust me. Um, until next week, you know, next week we got the Cleveland Browns. It's going to be interesting to break down that game after a hopeful chargers win. And I'm excited. Let's get back to the charger chat guys. Well, sorry, Jason, that we couldn't hear your magnificent you parlay. It. Yeah, man. It's, uh, all the money left on the table. Am I right? Mm. What happens with the short Sorry, week, Jason. folks? Yeah. If you want to be great, you have to be consistent. So we need it this week as well. <laughs> That's, yes. right. That's just truth. We're not looking for one week bangers. All right. We need consistency. Consistent bangers from you, Jay. Yeah. So I, I mean, what do you think about the 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 low scoring close game? Do you think that's the the possibility out there? I think it's interesting the fact they haven't brought out the odds um, for this game yet. They're waiting to hear on Justin, but I think it. I think it could be the case. I I think it's probably there because I don't think that offense is going to do a whole bunch on us. Mm -hmm. To be honest, I think it'll be a matter of how much we score will will dictate that. So yeah, yeah the reason the reason we had the 30, 40 point games last year is because we were in shootouts every week because our defense couldn't stop anybody. That changes when you go up a couple scores and you are trying to run the ball a little bit. Um, I'm hoping that we have success running the ball. And yeah, I think it's going to be like a, if you're looking for a combined points, looking at that over under. Yeah. I think, I don't, I don't think it's going to be much more than a 50 point combined total. I don't, I think it'll be well under that. All right. All right. Well, there you go, folks, Jason, thank you again for giving us all the hot takes over at the bolt beat. Um, and I think, that's pretty much going to do it for us here, folks. But before we go, we've got to give our own Bolt predictions. So what? Oh, boy. Kevin's cracking Kevin's knuckles. Ready. He Get is. All right. <laughs> He's poised. Let's hear what you got, Kevin. Yes. All right. I got us winning pretty decisively. 27-10 Chargers. Um, I think Herbert is still going to go out there and be awesome. He's going to have another three-touchdown game. And one of those is going to Austin Eckler because um, it'll be a little shorter um, I think we're going to get some some screens out of the backfield to Eck, and he's going to go off this week. All right. Wow. Good call. Good call. I, my, I like my score is similar, so I'll go right away. Um, this is a tough game in my house. I need the Chargers to pull out a big W. My son plays for Valley Center Pop Warner. Valley Center is the Jaguars. Oh, so there God. Is, there is the potential for, you, you, you know, that's like when you play Little League and you're play for on the Red Sox. They go, I'm a Red Sox fan now. I'm like, shut up. No, you're not. <laughs> no, you're not. That's kind of what's going on in the Duggan household right now. Oh, dear. He, oh. he does still say Chargers are one, but Jaguars are two. But if the Chargers could come out this week and put up what I think is going to be 28 to 10 yeah. victory, I just think it solidifies in my son's heart a, even a little bit more that the Chargers are the best team in the NFL. And I also have Austin Eckler going for 100 yards rushing 
I think you'll have even more through the air, but I think we're going to run the ball. We're going to, I think it's going to be a point of emphasis this week. Are you Excellent. quick question before you go? Well, dog, yes. are you going to rub it in his face super hard if they get destroyed? No, 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 no. It's, okay. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a teaching moment. It's a teaching I know, but moment. If you go too hard, dude, it could throw things into the other direction. Just saying, it's a teaching I'm moment. A Maybe evaluate kid. that. Maybe I'm evaluate a very competitive that. kid. If I go, <laughs> see, you suck. It'd be like, oh yeah, well you suck. I like the Jaguars now, and nobody will. Forever. I hate you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Doors are slamming. Okay, yeah. just evaluate. It could be a good teaching. I'll play moment. it by year, but I don't think that's going to happen. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> um, I'm going to say Chargers are going to win twenty-four to six, and uh, Chargers defense is going to come out be as strong as they are and hold. Uh, Trevor Lawrence to zero touchdowns. 24 to six. That's a good I like one. it. I like, <laughs> I like that so much. I really want that to happen. So, all right, gang. Well, bolt predictions in the books. We'll find out how it turns out on Sunday. But until then, folks, that's going to do it for us here at Charge Chant. Don't forget to bolt up because we're ready for any squad, any place. Okay, love you. Bye. Okay, love you. Bye. Okay, love you. Bye.